Hey, what up, boys? So, World of Warcraft 2 just released their beta announcement trailer. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, did I say World of Warcraft 2? <laughs> I meant Taris Land, the Chinese ripoff of World of Warcraft being marketed here in the West as a desperate attempt to cash in on Blizzard's IP now that they got themselves banned from China. Uh, hashtag breast milk. Oh, oh, come on, guys, I don't keep up with this drama. And today, uh, we're going to break down this trailer, discuss the game a little, and uh, give some expectations for what this game actually is. But before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a super cola because Taris Land is most certainly a controversial one due to its Chinese origins and blatant ripoff of the beloved World of Warcraft. But that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface because as we look at some gameplay and the trailer today, uh, yeah, do you know what? Let's just begin, shall we? So we'll start off this time around with the trailer because my dear god, it beautifully represents exactly what this game is trying to sell itself as. But before we jump into it, let me just preface that there isn't any uh, quote unquote gameplay in this trailer. It's just some very deceptive marketing techniques trying to make the gameplay seem very action packed and compelling. We will get to see some actual gameplay once we're done with this trailer because it pretty much outlines some of the best examples of today's really trashy. Uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, art style. Let's, uh, let's go with that. I love World of Warcraft's art style. However, what I see in this trailer is not World of Warcraft's art style at all. And you'll quickly realize what I mean as we begin. Now, uh, let's wind up this trailer and get stuck in. A new world awaits. Wait, a uh, new world? Oh god, I hope not. Amazon already announced their upcoming Lord of the Rings MMO, and we've had enough new worlds for one timeline. A snowy blizzard with the silhouette of a figure through the storm, very reminiscent of our childhood, but this one has an anthropomorphic lion in its wake instead of a washed up dwarf. The game has already captured the heart of the modern World of Warcraft audience. Rather, the Lich King comes to mind as we enter the icy heart of the Chinese conglomerate. Suddenly, Guild Wars 2 mounts, something Blizzard could only dream of capturing because by god they they fucked it royally with dragon flying. Remember Teldrassil, the highly nostalgic home of the night elves that we hold so dear in our hearts? Well, you can relive the nostalgia again in a really cheap mobile depiction of the zone using models so grotesquely mutated it makes me miss Wildstar again. Enter Bastion, a zone that's literally stolen from Shadowlands, but hey, anything that isn't actually Shadowlands is good, so this will be good. Look, there's even real players dueling, except the dueling looks really, really shit. Mulgore, but instead of the Tauren who have centuries of lore spanning across multiple games and franchises, it's really badly rendered anthropomorphic monstrosities to appeal to that furry agenda. Look how our game has fishing. Everyone in the MMORPG genre loves fishing, so why wouldn't you love ours? Murlocs, Ugh, they're so last century, guys. This is the age of mobile gaming, and cutesy half animal things are so much more monetizable than the iconic originals. Did I say? monetizable, I meant something less Chinese. Evil. The eye looks over the land, showing off epic battles that are definitely a representation of how the game will feel and most certainly not terribly rendered fly-throughs of Fortnite looking set pieces. A rogue chugs one of his thousands of stacking potions used as a monetization method to keep your characters alive at the convenience of the cash shop. But wait, World of Warcraft 2 promises it won't be pay to win, said absolutely nobody ever. Enter. Oh, oh no. Oh, sorry, wait a minute. Enter Deathwing, the most original boss I've ever witnessed in my entire life. I am shocked as this trailer seamlessly transitions into actual gameplay, said the Chinese marketing team looking to sell this game on mobile devices to a gullible Western audience. This looks truly epic and I cannot wait to play my Fortnite Hrothgar because cute 
furry feet are so much cooler than hooves. Actual boss mechanics consisting of pressing left on my keyboard or on mobile devices, holding down that little virtual stick sideways because that always feels amazing. The boss repeats his slowly telegraphed slam attack and everyone in shot gets hit by it because this is a true representation of your average World of Warcraft players. Another seamless transition to a pre-rendered cutscene as the boss tries to look like Bahamut, raining death upon his cash cows. I mean his, uh, something more market friendly like his adversaries. The rogue completely stops all mechanics to look cool because that's what sells a game, and the mage one-shots everything on the screen so I see nothing out of the ordinary here. Defeat! The furry has been defeated, or is this just a setup to mimic the iconic scene from World of Warcraft's original trailer? It is not, because slow-mo is so much cooler. Taris Land. The mystery of the hollow mobile game marketed to look somewhat like World of Warcraft. So yeah, if that trailer genuinely sold you then whew, you are definitely not my target audience. But let's look at some gameplay and talk about the game as a whole anyway because now I have your attention I'd love to hear your honest opinions on it as a mobile gamer. As you can see, it does look clean, very indicative of that cutesy, minimalistic mobile art style, but let's be honest, art style and graphics, I really genuinely don't give a shit, as long as the game feels and plays well. But that's just the problem, isn't it? Because Taris Land is marketed to both PC and mobile, that unfortunately means the gameplay, scope and content will be scaled down to accommodate the lesser platform, so both can be equally accessible. That means any kind of genuine, compelling content is well out of the window, and although the gameplay does look very reminiscent of a traditional MMORPG with the standard hotbars, the target selection, and the, the mage, warrior, rogue, and ranger classes, let's be honest with ourselves, although this is just closed beta gameplay, this looks really awful. It's pretty obvious this game is going to be another one of them easily accessible auto-combat Chinese grinders where the content offers about the same amount of challenge as putting on your socks in the morning. Perfect difficulty for the modern retail WoW player no doubt. Of course I want MMORPGs to be good, but I'm not going to stand here and accept this obvious bullshit and tell you that everything is going to be hype. My channel revolves around a game that quite literally doesn't exist, and I'll tell you this now. I wish this obvious ripoff of my beloved childhood game God Mobile didn't exist as well. But as usual, I am just one nerd. for a good MMO. And my opinion means nothing without yours in the comments below. I won't bother with an ending statement today because I expect this game to exist for exactly how long Asmongold ends up playing it for. So instead, I'll just thank my patrons because without their support, this balding middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet. The channel still sits on 90% subscribed viewers, so I'll assume this video will get lost in the void anyway, and I'll see you in the next one because you're high on copium.